So every few months or so, not that often, maybe only a couple of times a year, Young and I like to come to a Brazilian barbecue. Now, Brazilian barbecues, we, we've never shown it on our channel before, although we do go a couple of times a year. There's a lot of meat. There's a ton of meat at Brazilian barbecue. But then they also have a big salad bar where they have non-meat things. Then, of course, no salad bar in a Brazilian restaurant is complete without a good potato salad. The original Brazilian churrasco, or Brazilian barbecue, is uh, people walking around with the rodizio style. They have the big, long steaks, and they have meat that they put on a barbecue or on a rotisserie, and then they bring it around, and you get as much meat as you want. They'll give you a chip. You turn it over. So we've done our salad. We're ready for the meat to start. You turn it from red to green. You put it out here where they can see it, and they'll start coming by as they do immediately. You want more, you turn it over red, it tells them you don't want any more. But just to balance it out, they give you a salad bar with all kinds of veggies. Brazilian vinaigrette. What's that? Brazilian vinaigrette. Uh, this, yeah. is a, this is a vinaigrette. Thing. Vinaigrette. So yeah, what, what is this? Is this is chimichurri? chimichurri and okay, oh, got it. This is chimichurri. This is mint. This is vinaigrette. Okay, then of course they have all the peppers, um, all the vegetables, the cornichons there. Those are good. Beets, salads of, of every kind you can think of. Now I like this place because their salad bar is pretty extensive. They have sun-dried tomatoes, beets, they have a coleslaw, they have olives here, artichokes, marinated artichokes. And then they have various charcuteries, cheeses, meats of various kinds. They have some really good fresh mozzarella on the, on the bar. Salad, that's parsley. Then you have your standard salads here. Then of course you have your hearts of palm, your tomatoes of various types. Um, they have croutons and they have fresh bacon. Their bacon is really good here. Then they have a pineapple carpaccio, which is kind of unique to this place. And that's really good. And, and then here are the, the peppers. In, in most Brazilian barbecues, you will find different kinds of peppers on the salad bar. And here they have a couple of different types. Then, of course, no salad bar in a Brazilian restaurant is complete without a good potato salad. And here's a couscous, by the way, and this is a Brazilian-style couscous. It's not your typical Middle Eastern couscous that you're used to. Asparagus, shrimp, smoked salmon, and cheese. Then let's go over here. This is one of my favorite parts of their salad bar. They have a lobster bisque here. Oh, yeah. And lobster bisque is not technically Brazilian, but you do see a lot of seafood soups and stews in Brazil because they do have a coastline. But the lobster bisque is more French. But in places like Rio de Janeiro, you are gonna get French lobster bisque. And of course you got rice. And to go with the rice, rofa, which is like a breadcrumb mix, and feijoada which is the Brazilian national dish. Those, yes. are, those are beans. It's a bean stew. And it's got sausages and meats in it, usually in the feijoada. Sauteed mushrooms. Sauteed mushrooms. And then, of course, potatoes au gratin. So I really love their salad bar. Their salad bar here is much more extensive than you'll see in most Brazilian restaurants, and that's one of the reasons I like this place. And their meats are really good quality, as you will see when they bring them out. So I'm gonna go get myself some salad bar. Don't fill up on it, the meats are good. So let's get our salads, and then we'll have our meat. If you don't like meat, you could go here, you could just eat off the salad bar and you'd be perfectly happy. Get yourself a really nice salad with some beets, some bacon, some fresh cheese, oh yes, fresh mozzarella cheese. Can't go wrong with this. But if you're a meat eater, Brazilian barbecue is like one of the ways to go. And you will see when you get here. We're at Texas Day Brazil. They have many Brazilian barbecues around. 
We like Texas Day Brazil because we think it has the best balance of really good quality meat and a good quality salad bar. Some of the other places have great meat, but the salad bar sucks, and other places have really good salad bar, but the meat's like mediocre. Here, they have good both, and so we're gonna go, Young is gonna go get herself some wine, get drunk, and I'm gonna have a bunch of meat and get drunk on meat. So we should have a good time. Let's go and check out Texas Day Brazil Brazilian barbecue. Hi, we have reservations for 5.45. Cool, thank you, perfect. Still water. Yeah, she's gonna get a glass of wine. What do you got by the glass here? So we have this promotion. You would like to drink some wine, it's a good, good wine, uh -huh. and the original price is a hundred dollars. But this month, it's a fifty-five dollars. It's a good deal for the wine. Yeah, Where, where's the wine from? I gotta do my potato salad, which I did. By the way, on the table they brought us mashed potatoes, very common, bananas. Uh, sauteed bananas are very common in Brazilian cuisine, most South American cuisines. And then here they have this traditional Brazilian. This is called uh, pão de queijo, and pão de queijo is a cheese bread. It's a Brazilian cheese bread. Originally, the Brazilians, uh, native Brazilians, they used to make breads out of tapioca, out of cassava root. And it's chewy and it's soft. Well, as time went on, their gold region became less big on gold mining and they started growing dairy and they started growing cheeses and they started to incorporate cheese in their soft, chewy bread. And they created the pan de queijo, which is just classic, people love it. A good friend of mine said, I gotta try this and dip it in the lobster bisque here because that makes it really good. I don't care, I like it anyway. You get enough peppers, Jan? Now I mentioned bananas. Fried bananas are very common in Brazilian cuisine. And they can use them sweet as a dessert. They can have them starchy as um, a savory course. This one here, they, they make them sweet. They put on cinnamon and sugar on them but they're really tasty. Mm. So we've done our salads, we're ready for the meats to start. You turn it from red to green, you put it out here where they can see it, and they'll start coming by as they do immediately. Is this lamb? I'm not a lamb fan, so I'm not gonna do lamb. Do you want lamb? No. Okay. Bacon wrapped chicken? Yes, I'll take some bacon wrapped chicken. One. Oh yes, sorry. Do you need? I yes. just one for me. Yes, you don't get one. Oh, picanha! There's the picanha, yeah. I like it. Get mine, yeah, towards the end. I like that one. Yes. Like this? I think another one for Let's do another one, medium rare. Okay. That's good. Okay, like I said, the minute you turn it over green, you get an embarrassment of meats coming by. So I'm turning mine to red now, so I can eat without having a bunch of people bring meat by. Start with my chicken. Yeah. Young got some of the chimichurri sauce. Let me mention, chimichurri sauce is not native to Brazil. Chimichurri sauce actually comes from Uruguay and Argentina, but it's... Excuse me, plank steak? Yes. Okay, Young wants the plank please? steak, yeah. Can um, you use the tongue to grab, please? I will. Uh, no, I'm good. Now, as I was saying, chimichurri sauce is not native to Brazil. It's actually from Uruguay and Argentina. But it's throughout South America, it's become a very common uh, accoutrement that they serve with meats. And here in, in Brazilian restaurants, you tend to see it nowadays, even though it's not originally Brazilian. It's still good, it goes great with the meat. I am gonna go and get some of that vinaigrette 
because the vinaigrette goes really good with the meat. The picanha is fatty, it's seasoned, really tasty. But I'm first starting with the chicken. Now I love their vinaigrette here, and so I didn't get some flimsy little tiny dish like Young did of my sauce. I got a soup bowl full of it because I'm going to use the whole thing here. I think their vinaigrette here tastes delicious, and it's tangy, really good with the meats. It's a favorite of mine. And then the picanha, that's a favorite meat. It's fatty, it's well seasoned, uh, it's a little salty, but I like it like that. And it's probably my favorite meat on all the Brazilian barbecues I've tried. Would you like some fries? Mm -hmm. I'm good. Now for those of you who are used to eating in Mexican restaurants, the vinaigrette sauce here, it's very much like a pico de gallo. The difference is it's not as spicy. The peppers in here are like bell peppers. They're not very spicy. Uh, there's a lot of parsley in it and there's a lot of vinegar in it. So it's got a tangier flavor, a less spicy flavor, but it still has a lot of tomatoes. It has a lot of pepper flavor and it goes really well. It complements the meats here very well. And it is a favorite of mine. Yes. How are you today, sir? Very good, how are you? I'm doing well, sir. Would you like one or two bombs? Let's just do one for me. For you? Yeah. Take it. There we go. One for me too. One for her too. Can you take her? I will take hers. And then at some point, if you can bring by the beef rib, she's looking forward to trying the beef rib. Thank you. No, I grab it. No, you grab it? Now he offered to bring us some French fries. They have a lot of things that they'll bring you that aren't the meat and not the salad bar. For example, they have these mashed potatoes. They're very creamy. They're really delicious. The bananas are really good. The cheese bread is really good. But you know what that does? That fills you up so you don't eat so much meat. The meat is the expensive stuff. If you want to get your money's worth, you probably want to keep your side dishes to a minimum and eat more meat. I don't care, I just like the overall flavors of everything, it's all tasty. And so what? So I'll fill up on the salad and I'll fill up on the potatoes and the, the cheese bread. It's still a delicious dinner, who cares, right? Give me one second, let me do the cheese. The whole piece? Yeah, sure. Got it. If there's a one, that's fine. All right. Yes. All right. That's yeah, good. thank you. Thank you. Finally, we got a rib. Yes. Me like rib. So they had a lot of desserts here, uh, and even though they call them Brazilian, very few of them are actually Brazilian. They have something they call a Brazilian cheesecake. It's not Brazilian. They have something they call a Brazilian flan. Now that's probably a, a Brazilian flan. They they don't call it flan. What do they call it? Pubiba or something like that, which is like a flan. It is Brazilian. Then they have something they call. Brazilian mango cream or something like that. And uh, there's no such thing in Brazil. And then they have pecan pie and they have all kinds of things. The real Brazilian desserts, things like uh, brigadeiros or stuff like that are really delicious. 
but they don't have that here. This is more American desserts. It's okay. I'm going to have myself a Brazilian cheesecake that's not Brazilian at all, but I don't care. I'm in the mood for a cheesecake. All of the desserts, it's a dark it's a sea salt. I don't know, liquor is very good with all the desserts. Mm. So like a shot. I think I would like a piece of the cheesecake and a cup of coffee. Thank you. Thank you. That's creamier and sweeter than most cheesecakes I've had. It's not as tangy as I would expect. It's still tasty. And I'm still going to finish it all up. There's chocolate on the bottom and dulce de leche on the top. So it's a really nice combination. <laughs> well, I am very satisfied and full of meat and cheesecake. That was really delicious meal. We love coming here. It's always a good, good meal. We really enjoy it. And uh, we'll be back here the next time we're in the mood to just stuff ourselves full of meat.